So the reason I've made this video is because people buy fish tanks and after a couple of months they get a bit tired of the maintenance um, and maybe the running cost and then they decide that they don't want to keep the fish anymore and they sell it. So having said that I'll cover the following things in the video. I'll first touch upon the capacity, so how many litres does your tank need to be, this will all depend on how many fish you want to keep. Uh, the cost, um, so more the ongoing maintenance cost, so uh, what equipment do you need, uh, food cost um, and other stuff like uh, water conditioners, test kits. Um, and then also the effort required, so you know how often do you need to clean the tank, um, how many water changes do you need to do on a weekly basis, how often do you need to clear, uh, clean the filter sponge, um, so we'll cover that. And then finally um, I'll touch upon uh, what happens when the fish get uh, pregnant, uh, what you may need to do um, and some of the issues that could cause as well. So capacity, uh, this is the one which I can't give you a straightforward answer and I don't think anyone on this planet probably could. Um, so let, let's explain the logic, what do we mean by capacity? So um, you know fish need space uh, to move around um, and they need oxygen um, and the more fish you put in the tank uh, the less oxygen levels they are uh, because each fish is going to take the oxygen levels. Uh, just imagine yourself in a small box room filled with 400 people um, you know you're going to really struggle to breathe uh, because the oxygen levels are just being taken by each, each person. Um, so sort of the same logic will apply with fishes. Um, now wh where it gets tricky is um, this also depends on uh, you know the filters you have. Um, you know if you've got a filter and um, like air bubbles that creates more oxygen. If you don't have an air bubble and you just have a filter then there's less oxygen being created. Um, and all the oxygen levels are created at the surface of the water and this is why we need filters to um, create um, that the moving uh, of water. Um, so what I'd recommend you to do is don't stress yourself out because you're going to go to Google, you're going to research, you're going to find different information. Um, so I'd recommend you to maybe visit this website which I put here which is the petsupplyguide.com uh, you can sort of uh, put the measurements of your tank and it will give you a sort of a rough guide as to um, how much fish you could keep. Um, and of course you can always go to your local pet store, uh, they'll have some experience and give you, they can give you some guidance. And the best tip is to not go over the limit, um, just try to keep under and then you'll be fine. So if I start with non-maintenance costs, uh, just a note to say that these are all subjective because these may depend on tank size, um, so take these with a pinch of salt. Um, the heater, uh, if your tank doesn't come with a heater, um, then you're looking to at least spend between 10 to 30 pound. Uh, this again depends on the tank size, so if you've got a bigger tank, um, you need a bigger heater, um, and the cost will go uh, up obviously. Um, so 10 to 30 pound for the heater. Plants, again, this is if you want plants, um, but you most likely will need plants because they help with um, um, catching nitrate and stuff like that. Um, and obviously they also produce help with producing some oxygen as well. Um, so you might be looking between 10 to 20 pound, but again, this depends on your tank size. If you've got a small tank, you don't really need that many plants. Um, air pump bubbles, again this is optional, but if you want to create a bit more oxygen, um, again all varies between tank size if you need it or not, um, you're at least looking between 15 to 20 pound. Um, ornaments, again this is optional, um, but you know most likely people will want to decorate the tank and they will buy some ornaments, so at least you're looking between uh, 5 pound and above, uh, so just bear that cost in mind. And there's a few additional stuff like algae cleaner, uh, fish net to catch fishes, uh, a breeding box if you've you know got any pregnant fishes, uh, delivering babies. Um, yeah, at least looking between ten to fifteen pound for that equipment. Um, so on a minimum basis, um, you might be looking at fifty pound additional to uh, you purchase in the tank to buy this equipment. And of course, you also need to bear in mind that you know plants will die. Um, they don't live forever um, and you know your air pump bubble um, may break same as your heater um, so you know they're at least going to last a couple of years but um, you just need to also bear that in mind uh, cost of replacement so moving on to the maintenance cost um, again these are all 
very subjective. Um, at food, we're looking between three pound to six pound every three months. You know, this will vary on the type of food you're giving a fish. Uh, so if you're giving them flakes, that's generally the more cheaper option. And again, it depends on the amount of fish you're having um, and how often you feed them. Um, so if you're feeding them every day and you've got loads of fish, you know, that's going to finish a bit quicker. Um, so you might even exceed the three pound. It might be six pound for you. Um, so bear that in mind. Um, water conditioner. Um, again, this will all vary between how big your tank is um, and how often you change your water as well. But if you're doing it on a weekly basis, which is you know recommended, then you're looking at at least between ten to twenty pound on a yearly basis. Uh, plant food. Um, of course, your your plant will need some food uh, in order to grow and stay alive. Um, there's different types of food available. Uh, but at least you're looking between £15 yearly on that. Um, but again, as, as I mentioned before, if you're not going to keep plants, then don't add this to your costs. So in total, we're looking around £37 a minimum on an annual basis. So moving on to the effort and time required. Um, again, these are a bit subjective. Um, but anyway... Water changes, um, if you're going to do these on a weekly basis, that's at least going to take you between, you know, at least 10 to 15 minutes. Um, you know, when you're doing your water changes, you're not just taking out water, you, you might also be um, cleaning out your gravel, um, because there might be a lot of dirt there, um, so you need to bear that in mind. Um, and then obviously just changing the water, putting new water in, all of that stuff. So, you know, at least 15 minutes in total. Um, cleaning tank glass, so this is you know getting rid of any algae. Um, again, you don't really need to do this weekly, um, but I'd recommend you to do it weekly because it will just mean every week it's easier. Whereas if you leave it to uh, build up, it's going to be a bit harder to clean. Um, but that should be a quick five minutes if you've got a magnet algae cleaner. Uh, you know that'll be a bit quicker. Or even if you've got a uh, sponge uh, and a stick to do it, um, it shouldn't take you too long at all. And then a filter sponge cleaning, um, again, this is very subjective. Um, you don't even need to do this monthly. Um, but if you want to do it monthly, then it's at least five minutes. On a side note, you need to make sure you don't um, run your filter sponge down the tap and you don't squeeze everything off because all the bacteria is kept in uh, the sponges. So you just need to uh, dip it into um, you know, the tank water you've taken out. Um, and just uh, just gently just rub off any uh, dirt on the sponge, but don't don't squeeze it. At that at that will um, uh, possibly kill off some bacteria. Um, but yeah, that's that's about five minutes. You're looking. So in total, we're looking at at least around um, twenty minutes weekly uh, on a uh, you know sort of effort. Um, so you can do the maths to work out the monthly effort. So finally, moving on to um, you know what needs to be done when your fish uh, get pregnant, uh, giving birth and you know what possible impact could this have, have on the tank. Um, so first thing is you, you if you want to keep uh, the fishes, which I'm assuming you do, uh, unless you want the other fish to eat them, you'd need to have a, a breeding box at least or you know even a, a spare tank set up. Um, so the breeding box is just stick to the tank, um, tank glass and you, know, you just use your fish net to catch the uh, baby fishes and put them in there um, and then you'll feed them but within three to four months uh, they're going to grow and they'll need to be released from the breeding tank um, so this is what you need to think about is uh, if you just release them in the main tank you know do you have the oxygen levels to deal with uh, the capacity of the fishes um, if not then you know you might want to advertise them on ebay and other uh, apps um, for other people to buy them or you may need to give them to a local pet store um, and you know it's uh, in my experience um, it's quite difficult um, uh, getting a uh, baby fries from goldfish uh, but when I've had tro tropical fish uh, it's been much easier because um, a lot of them are live bearers so they don't lay eggs or anything uh, especially like fishes like guppy and the mollies um, so, you know, in the past I've had at least more than 200 of them, um, and I've just managed to sell them. So that's something you need to bear in mind, and again, it, it's sort of all, all at the start of the beginning, like if you don't want to have any fry, 
then you just make sure that you don't buy any uh, female fish for example or you don't mix the females and the males together so to wrap up um, I hope this video has been beneficial um, hopefully this will give you an indication as to the effort required the cost required before you start a fish tank thanks for watching